This is Sarah from Legendary Trails, and today we're taking a break from our normal adventures to kind of give you a guide in case you ever want to do some of the things that we've done in the past and learn from our mistakes, and we'll try to give you a little bit more about our experiences. What can you do to save some money in the expensive land of Moab? Well, don't worry. We're here to help you. We're going to help you understand how to do things on the cheap or possibly even free in Moab, Utah. You finally decided that it's time to take a trip to the famous Moab, Utah. However, you didn't realize you'd be paying Telluride prices? Well, we're here to help. The average cost for a hotel in Moab, Utah, depending on the season, is around $186 a night. Food on average, depending on what you do, is about $30 per person per day. And of course, with inflation, that's just can continue to go up. So your average trip for Moab for seven days is around $2,047 for a solo traveler, $3,076 per couple, or if you're a family of four, $6,800 or more. That's a lot of money, if you ask me. We're gonna start with accommodations. Accommodations are something that you can either spend a lot of money on or not so much money on. It just depends on what you are comfortable with spending and also where you're comfortable staying. If you've never been to Moab, Utah, it is pretty much surrounded by desert. All those picturesque arches you see, they are in the middle of the desert. There's very little shade unless you are by the rivers. So where does that leave you for accommodations, you ask? Well, choice number one, which will save you the most money on your trip to Moab, Utah, is roughing it. If you look at a map around Moab, Utah, there is ample amounts of BLM land and forest land. Now you have to be careful and know what the regulations are for each of these areas. However, a lot of them offer free camping. Free camping, usually for Moab, means no amenities, no shade, no bathrooms, so you need to pack in what you bring and pack it out. What does that really mean? It means you can save a lot of money on accommodations on your trip, which is really expensive as we discussed, $186 per night on a hotel. Yeah, probably for me, I'm gonna probably rough it. Now, if you aren't comfortable with having less amenities and you want at least a bathroom, there are some campsites which are first come first serve typically that do offer restrooms and some even offer potable water. Those will run you on average around $20 plus a night. Some will even range up to $56 if you're gonna more KOA and some are $100. So you have to really shop around on those. Some of our favorite areas are along the Colorado River, either on off of Potash Road or off of um, the Scenic Byway, but those fill up quickly. So you do need to plan ahead and try to get in there during a weekday versus a weekend because if you get there on a weekday, you're more likely to find a camping spot. If you don't wanna totally rough it, well, there's a second option for you, and it's called glamping. Now, your glamping sites in Moab will vary dramatically depending on what price range you're looking at. There are several glamping options in the Moab area. Some are small tents or they even have small cabins. Depending on what kind of glamping that you want to do, there are different price points. On average, they start around $54 per night and those are just for some basic tent. There are some though, if you want to go to like Canvas Moab, they will run you $339 per night. That's some expensive glamping. After hearing those two other options, you pretty much decided that you don't want to rough it and you don't want to go glamping. I totally understand. Sometimes it's just really nice to have a hotel, right? But Moab prices, oh man, you could save some coin there. So what are your options? What's around the Moab area? And are you willing to drive? If you are willing to drive, you can save some serious money in this department of accommodations. Our first recommendation is the area of Monticello, Utah. Well, where is Monticello, you ask? Well, it's about an hour south of Moab, Utah. And it's a cute little town, has some restaurants and just a really nice small town feel. For about an hour out of the way, you're gonna be saving a lot of money just because you're willing to drive. And also, personally, I believe it's a great launching point if you're gonna do things on the south side of Moab than being right in the center of everything. So if you're gonna be on the south side doing things like picture frame arch or the south side of Canyonlands, 
Monticello is actually a better starting point for your trip. Well, you don't want to hang out on the south side. What about the north side? Do I have to stay in Moab? No, you don't. There is the tiny town of Green River, Utah. If you're there in the summer, definitely pick up a Green River watermelon. Trust me, you won't regret it. As far as staying there, you, it's a great launching point off for the north side of Moab. And it's only about an hour out of the way. It is off of I-70, so you can't miss it. However, one caveat with them is that the restaurant choices are a little bit more limited, so you might want to plan ahead. So you've decided where you're going to stay. Well, what is there to do in Moab? Well, when most people think about Moab, they think about Arches National Park and Canyonlands. While this park is truly spectacular and is a great place, in high season now, you will need a reservation to get in. And sometimes, even with your reservation, the long lines of cars can be astronomical and finding parking at some of those famous arches like landscape arch and delicate arch can be nearly impossible. You don't want to wait in those lines? Well, don't worry. We have some cheap options for you that are just as cool around the Moab area. Our first recommendation is found kind of on the northwest side of Moab on the way to Canyonlands and it's called Tibbetts Arch. And what's great about it, the price to visit it, free. Yes, I said free. Of course, you know, you gotta pay for gas, but it's free as far as you don't have to pay anything extra besides getting there. This arch is a large arch and is sometimes called Hell Roaring Arch because it sits above Hell Roaring Canyon. This hike is about a two mile round trip and will lead you to Hell Roaring Canyon with its picturesque view and as well as the view of the arch across the way. The next option is also another arch. What arches outside of Arches National Park say it isn't so? but it is. One of our favorites is Corona Arch, and it's right off of a historic scenic byway as well, which is also on our list, but let's start with that arch. It is a 2.4 mile heavily tracked out trail and is located on the south side of Moab, Utah. It's also along the Colorado River. So if you're camping down there, it'll be nearby. This trail is primary used for hiking, but it is allowed with dogs if you put them on the leash. There is a small section of the trail. They do have anchors in the rock for you to hold onto, but as far as with children going, it is something that a, I would say a child, depending on their hiking ability, can do pretty easily. The other thing about this, just like Tibbetts Arch, is it's free. Don't you love free? I love free. So you're kind of tired of hiking, you've hiked the other two, and you want to just take a kind of a historic break. Well, the Moab Museum of Film and Western Heritage at Red Cliffs Ranch is a great opportunity, and you guessed it, it's free. The museum celebrates Moab's film heritage history, which it's honestly an amazing place to go. Red Cliffs Ranch, where it's located, is spectacular by itself. It is a place you can stay, but depending on the season you are in, it can be rather expensive. However, they offer horseback riding and other things, but the museum they do offer for free. It celebrates history of filmmaking around Moab. It is full of Moab related from the old westerns to Thelma and Louise and city slickers as well as several commercials. I highly recommend it if you're into film history. If you visited the Moab Film Museum that we just talked about, you will be located on the Colorado River Scenic Byway. This is also a free option for you. If you drive it, it is amazing. The views are amazing. The Upper Colorado Scenic Byway is popular known as River Road, as it is described as one of the most interesting and breathtaking scenic byways imaginable. We drive this way anytime we go to Moab instead of taking Interstate 70 because it is spectacular. The views are always amazing. Each season is different. So just because you've done it once doesn't mean you shouldn't do it again. And also there's a lot of good hiking that's located off of there as well. So you're driving the scenic byway and you wanna do one of these hikes. The one we can recommend that most people think is great is called Fisher Towers. Fisher Towers is really an amazing, great trail. And it even offers many amazing views just from the parking lot. It is family friendly, dog friendly, pretty much anybody who likes amazing views friendly. And what's great about it is you don't have to complete the entire trail if you don't want to, to get these amazing spectacular views. It is truly an amazing hike that gives you a great view of this valley. So Scenic Byway 279 Historic Rock Art. 
Rock art? Right off the highway, you say? Yes, I do. And again, free. Why wouldn't you want to go see this? It's right off the highway, and if you did Corona Arch, it's not that far away from that location. You need to pull over on the side of the highway to get to this one. I do recommend being careful crossing the highway to get to these rock art sites. There's also popular climbing right there, so if you're into climbing, that is a great place to go climbing. There are marked designated areas for that. But the rock art itself is a little ways down from that. There is a sign, so look for the sign and you'll see it and then walk across the highway very carefully. We don't want this to be an episode of Frogger. And when you get up to the rock site, it's truly an amazing thing. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. So everything we've been offering so far for that's free is hiking. What about you off-roaders out there like us? Isn't there some places that are pretty cool that maybe a stock vehicle can go on that I don't have to do Hell's Revenge? Or I have to do Metal Bender? Yes. There are some great places that are free. Those are great free options as well. Hell's Revenge isn't free, but we'll get into that. There are some great free options that don't require you getting uncomfortable if this is your first time. Moab. So we're gonna start with one of the more popular ones. And sadly, you do have to pay a little smidgen of a fee for this one, and I'm sorry. This one is the Sand Flats Recreation Area. There's a small fee, as I said. It's about $5 per vehicle per day. And if you want to do camping there, there is another fee for that. It's about $15 per vehicle per day for up to five people for those camping sites. So if you don't mind paying, if you want to go four-wheeling in some of these historic areas, it's a $5 fee. Make sure to bring cash because a lot of times the kiosk isn't open and you'll have to actually just put it in the envelope. So do not plan on bringing a credit card or big bills. Make sure to bring exact change for when you go in there just in case. So if you go to the Sand Flats Recreation website, you can look at a map and see what's available. And also this is a great area to try out if you're comfortable with Slick Rock in general. Baby Lion's Back. So if you stop at Baby Lion's Back first, you can see if you're comfortable with it at all. Because some people get on Slick Rock and it just isn't for them. So it's a great way to test out your vehicle to see if your vehicle is capable of making some of those climbs before you want to tackle something harder like fins and things in Hell's Revenge. If you're not comfortable with baby lion's back, it's probably not advisable for you to do fins and things. Next on our recommendation list is Tusher Tunnel. Tusher Tunnel is one of our favorite places in Moab, Utah. It is located northwest of Moab itself. And if you're careful, you can get any stock 4x4 SUV or truck into there. Tusher Tunnel itself is an interesting geological feature. A crack in the rock has allowed water to seep in until reaching a harder layer of rock. Where it met the harder rock, it eroded a tunnel from one side of the cliff to the other, thus creating a tunnel-like structure. The tunnel length itself is about 83 feet, or more in length, give or take, and high enough that you can easily walk through. Those with a high clearance wheel four wheel drive vehicle can drive all the way to the Tusher Tunnel trailhead. And honestly, you can make it, it's not that bad. Of course, use your own judgment. Just because we made it, doesn't mean that you feel comfortable doing what, how we've driven and how we've made it in the past. But if you decide to hike because you're just not comfortable, it's only about two miles to get to Tusher Tunnel from the main parking area. So it's totally a doable hike or it's a doable off-road depending on what you plan on doing. Tusher Tunnel is definitely a must see on your list. Near the same area as Tusher Tunnel is another favorite of ours and it is called Gemini Bridges. Gemini Bridges is an easy adventure that any family can enjoy. This route is popular for mountain biking, off-roading and hiking depending on what you would like to do. Personally, we like to four wheel into Gemini Bridges, but really the trail itself, not that bad. It's something you can do in your stock SUV. A little ground clearance is helpful depending on the season and erosion, but you can do it as long as you have decent four wheel drive. I personally have seen Subarus and vans in there and none of them have had any issues. This is definitely something that almost anyone can do in the Moab area. But use caution when you do go to Gemini Bridges, there have been people who have lost their lives because they have not been paying attention or they tried to jump the gap. Don't do this. Don't be that person that gets it shut down. Please be careful as you hike around these natural wonders. The last one on our list, and probably, I don't know, might be, I think, one of the better ones, 
is picture frame arch. And you guessed it, picture frame arch is considered free. There's nothing for you to pay in this area. All you need to pay is for your gas. Maybe bring a sandwich or two because where you can go after picture frame arch is definitely worth sitting and having a lunch. I would say it's a lunch spot. The trail to picture frame arch is short and it is mostly sandy and little rocky and uneven in places. It also is a short trail and any stock 4x4 vehicle with good ground clearance is capable of making it to the back side of the arch. So you've seen picture frame arch, but you're looking for just a little bit more. Well, if you continue down the trail, you can reach a spectacular overlook. Now to get your vehicle down to the overlook, most of the trail is pretty easy. However, there is a section of steps and depending on how much erosion there has been, it can be rather difficult. We made it down in our 98 F-150. Be advised that if you are a longer wheel-based vehicle, you will have a difficult time getting down the steps. When we took our 2017 Toyota Tundra, we made sure to just park on the truck after attempting the steps and changing our minds and just walking down to the overlook. The overlook overviews Cane Creek Canyon and this is what I call a lunch spot. So that is it for our cheap slash free ways to do Moab, Utah. We hope you enjoyed the advice and can use some of it. Some of it's for some people and not for others. But if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And we hope to see you soon. Bye for now.